So this is what I thought was a working Commodore 64C. It turns out it's not. Uh, for one thing, uh, I've blown the 9 volt fuse, which is a bit odd. That's not really the problem though. The problem is, I've got one of these back bit cartridges, one of these things, and uh, it just doesn't work in this machine. So you might be thinking, well, there's something wrong with the back bit cartridge. But I had two of these and they both didn't work in this machine. And I gave one of them to my brother, who's got a machine that is exactly like this. It's the same motherboard revision, and it was made two weeks earlier in this one, and it works perfectly fine in his. So that means there's something wrong with my machine. Um, and I have found one of the problems already, which is not the 9 volt fuse blowing. That is, a, that is a different thing. But I'll show you what happens when I boot this back bit cartridge. Now, keep in mind, this is not a problem with the back bit that I'm aware of. And it is actually responding. Uh, Maybe it's not responding. Maybe the keyboard doesn't work anymore. Uh, let me just reset it. If you reset it, it does look like it's working. But if you go to any of these folders, it just goes back up to the top. Yeah, so if I power it down and then power it on again. Oh, it's actually worked that time. But then I get this garbage screen. Uh, but there's something seriously wrong with it. I don't know what it is yet, but it's not the back bit. Something's causing the back bit to go really funny. So one of the things I thought I'd do is just take a look with this oscilloscope, but what the hell one of these address lines is doing, just one near the cartridge port, because I thought it might be that. But if you take a look at this, um, it's doing some pretty odd things. There's, it's like four volts, uh, and then sometimes it's a little bit above four volts, which is weird. But if I actually measure the five volts, but it's actually, yeah, it's actually four and a bit volts. So something really weird's going on, but the address lines just look nasty. They just don't look right at all. They don't look like nice address lines. It's got these little rises in them there and it's kind of creeping up. So that's all a bit nasty. And it doesn't make any difference whether the cartridge is in the port or not. You get the same result anyway. So one of the suggestions was it might be bad caps. I mean, that's a possibility because the caps in this are 29 years old now. And uh, I did have a look at them and they all seem to look Okay, in typical Commodore style, they've got a mixture of caps. Um, they've got three different uh, brands of caps in here. The electrolytic ones, that is. And on closer inspection, turns out that I can actually see one that is definitely leaking. Yeah, so it's this cap here, which is a five volt bypass cap, and that has started to leak. And I've got uh, like a high res picture of that, so you can actually see that there's like crusty stuff going underneath. So don't know what that would be doing, but that could be screwing things up. And because that one's leaking, it's um, possible that all the other ones are leaking as well. And it's an Elmer brand cap, which I, uh, I found those in the Amiga 600 that I had. And I think this was made in probably the same year as the Amiga 600. So they obviously just got whatever they had in stock and just shoved it all in. So I've got a replacement capacitor pack. I'll probably just end up replacing all the electrolytic capacitors now because they've clearly gone past their sell by date and they may be causing this problem that I'm seeing on the oscilloscope and may be causing the problem with the back bit. But the other ones, I can't see any signs of leakage. I'll try this one first and see if that makes any difference to the readings on the oscilloscope. And if not, then I'm going to go around and replace the other ones anyway before I do any further investigation because they are on their way out, unfortunately. Um, but they've lasted a long time, longer than they should have lasted. So I'll take this out now and I'll replace this cap to start with and I'll see if that makes any difference. Right, so this little bad boy is the one that's going. C58, five volt by bypass cap. Maybe, just maybe, I can get this one off with a soldering iron. It's a small cap, but it has got a big ground plane on it. I'll try it. Oh, maybe. I think I got that one. All right, that's definitely one side out. That side just doesn't want to come out. All right, I've definitely got one leg out. I'm just trying to get the other one out now. There we go. So in the end, I don't know if that, oh, that cap has... Yeah, there is something wrong with it. See if I can get the solder off here. Out of these holes. I have that to get the desoldering station out. This one's on this big ground plane. I've got the cap out, I can't seem to get the solder out of the hole. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Right, so I should have a replacement cap for this one. 100 microfarads, 16 volts. 
tried to do all that without getting the desoldering station out and I could get the cap out and I got one of the holes clean but the one with the big ground plane I couldn't do it so every time I just put a bit more solder in to try and get it to work I just uh, ended up with more solder in than I wanted. There we go. We are back in business with at least that cap anyway. I don't know, I'm not holding out for much but let's just see if it's made any difference to how this computer boots up. Firstly, does it still boot? Moment of truth. Let's see if we get anything different. No. So, it wasn't that cap. Let's just probe one of these address lines. Now, it still looks super dodgy, but is it actually better? Still pretty bad. Yeah, it's got like these drop-offs at the end, and that is just really odd. And it's still like four volts. Yeah, we've got just over four volts coming in here. Yeah, something really odd going on there. It's like something else is like crept onto the bus and is doing something weird and it doesn't get all the way up to five volts. I just don't know if this is normal. I've not got another one to compare it to, but I'm not sure if that cap has actually improved things. Maybe there's other dodgy caps on here. It's possible. Well, one cap down, about a million more to go. So the good news is I've replaced all the caps on the C64C and the bad news is it doesn't fix any of the problems with the back bit cartridge. Uh, it still has exactly the same problem. I kind of did expect that, but I just thought if there's any danger of any of these caps going bad and maybe sending one of these chips funny, then that's definitely the first thing to do. It wasn't that hard to do, so probably worth doing. I think there's eight caps. There they all are. There, they're all a bit... I measured a few of them, they did all seem okay, but I mean, just because they measure the right capacitance doesn't mean they're working properly. But they are all gone now, you can see the mixture that Commodore used. So the next problem then is to try and find out why the back bit doesn't work, I don't know what that is. Still looks like there's something funny going on on the address bus. It does look kind of digital, looks like one of these chips is doing something on the bus that the back bit doesn't like. The next problem also, the nine volt fuse that was blowing, and here it is. I got replacement fuses, I stuck that in, and it turns out that the, the new fuse just blows pretty much instantly, so the cassette drive in the SID chip doesn't work. At some point before I did the recapping, I think I may have shorted out one of the parts that's on the nine volt line. So I'm gonna have to find that now, just to make it um, even more tricky to, I'm gonna have to fix the fix that I've done. So I'm gonna have to go through and check all the stuff on the nine volt line to find out what it is, because I'm pretty sure one of the components has blown. It could be this bridge rectifier could be one of these diodes over here the nine volt line gets about the board in various places i'll just have to find out what that is and then fix it so that's the next step now is just to get it back <laughs> into working order for a piece of damage that i did before i did the recapping actually i don't think i damaged it while i was recapping the recapping's gone quite well it was quite easy actually as it stands right now this computer works it turns on but it won't get any sound and it won't you can't use the cassette drive and possibly other things don't work I'm not sure what they would be but other than that it's still functional and still has the same fault with this one thing i can say is um i was getting 5.1 volts in through the power and by the time it went through the switch it was down to about 4.8 so i put a load of cleaner in the switch and that got it back up to about five volts so maybe the switch was a bit dirty uh, that didn't have any effect on it either so the back bit was still a failure after that the other thing i did is i did take the sid out just to give that a check and uh, even though the sid's not getting its nine volts so even with the sid out the, the address bus looked exactly the same so all i can say right now is it's not it's not the power switch that's causing it, and it's not the SID, and it's not the caps. So whatever's causing this weird problem is not those things, but I do need to get the 9 volt line working again just to get this computer back to the way it should be. But that's just going to be me going through and trying to find which component is blown. So that's the next step. So it's actually a few days later now, and I've been investigating this problem for quite some time. I've been going around all the components on the nine volt lines, trying to look for anything that's got a problem. I've been checking all the components and I can't find any problem. I've put another fuse in now and because I couldn't find any problems at all, I just decided I was gonna turn it on and see what happened. But I did take the SID out and I've booted this up a few times now and it doesn't blow the fuse. So let's just see if it works now. So yeah, so I'm gonna turn that off. I'll just turn it on again now and 
So the computer will boot without the 9 volt fuse in, but it won't do the cassette drive and the SID won't work. So it's on at the moment, and if I actually try and load something off cassette, this won't work if the 9 volt fuse is blown. And there we go. So cassette drive's running, so 9 volt line is working. So I don't know why that is. It may be that the SID is bad, but I'm not sure. So I'm just going to measure one of these diodes on the 9 volt line just see what the let's just see what the voltage is across one of these diodes that's close to the start of the 9 volts so i'm being careful not to short anything so i've got 9.8 volts um going across like near the start um of that line uh, and if i measure on the sid because the sid takes the 9 volts well this would be where the sid is so i'm getting 9.4 volts into the sid and the 5 volt line is 4.9 volts. So that's all looking really healthy. I don't know why the 9 volt line was blowing its fuse, but it seems to be working now, but the SID's not in. So maybe next thing to do is just stick the SID back in and see if it blows up. If it does, then maybe this SID has gone bad. It's one of the newer SIDs, the 8580, that does it. it runs on the 9 volts instead of the 12 volts, which the older ones do. So they don't get as hot and they're quite reliable. Let's try this see what we get so i'm going to turn this off now watch that fuse to see if it pops which it didn't so i'm just going to pop the sid back in the right way and make sure it's in the right way looks good to me let's just check that there's no short between ground and the 12 volt line no mega ohms so there's no short there so now the moment of truth is is this going to blow up or is the fuse going to blow when i turn it on and here we go well, I heard the cassette drive power up, computer's on, and it's working. So I wonder if we're going to get any sound. I'm actually loading this Nemesis tape, uh, which I know for a fact doesn't work, but it does load. Like it gets to the end of the loading sequence and then just fails. I don't know why, but it's a good enough test because it's something on cassette. And I think it does play music on the loading screen. At the moment, it's working. So I don't know if I just shorted it by accident when I actually would, was looking at it because I've been probing around trying to find this problem with the back bit. The good news is at least at the moment right now it's just working exactly the way it was before and I have all the same problems I had before with the back bit uh, but now I've got new caps in which is nice. I think it's got loading music and the fuse hasn't blown yet. We'd know it when the tape stops. So the SID's functional So what the hell was wrong with this computer? I have no idea now. Maybe something was just accidentally shorted on one of the lines when I actually turned it on. Or maybe it was just a bad fuse I put in. This is the classic ocean loading music. I'm gonna leave it here and call this a win is that I've recapped the computer. It does still work. It hasn't solved any of my problems and I maybe had a 9 volt problem that could be just related to the fuse or just related to the fact that I had shorted something by accident while I was messing about. But yeah, let me just do one last measurement now that the SID's back in. 9.8 volts. So I don't know if that's a little bit high. There we go. So I'll probably continue in a future video to investigate the back bit problem, which still exists. I'll just put this back together after this and then uh, enjoy my Commodore.